Disclaimer, this video is not anti-homosexuality. The video title probably doesn't mean what you think it means. I'm only making this disclaimer because I know that YouTube is just full of people who love to judge videos without actually watching them. So before you all run to the dislike bar, bear in mind that this video is a bit closer to being pro-homosexuality, but isn't really that either. It's more just like, I don't care about anybody's homosexuality, and neither should you, and so none of us should be passing judgment, okay? So please actually watch the video thanking you kindly. Good morning, everybody. My name is Alex, and seeing as Australia is currently in the midst of a voluntary survey to find out if the public think that loving the wrong person is a crime unworthy of state recognition, I can't think of a better time to be discussing the topic I'd like to address today. I want to consider the following question. Is homosexuality moral? The answer? No. Wait, le let me clarify that. When I say no, that homosexuality is not moral, I don't at all mean to say that it's immoral. Rather, what I want to imply is that the question as a whole is erroneous. As soon as this so-called debate is brought up, as soon as somebody poses the question about homosexuality in this manner of morality, they've already committed a grave fallacy. The mistake being made here is an ungrounded assumption that homosexuality as a topic, or an act, or an orientation, falls within what I call the moral sphere, that is, things that can be viewed and judged in the context of morality. Everything we ever do falls within one of two categories. It either falls within the moral sphere, or it falls within the amoral sphere, that is, not in the moral sphere. My goal here is to describe the difference between these two spheres and explain which one is home to homosexuality. My aim is to show you that no, homosexuality is not inherently moral, but it isn't immoral either. It's got absolutely nothing to do with morality, and you therefore have no right to morally judge people for it. In other words, I want to show you why even considering whether someone is being moral or not by simply being a homosexual is a ridiculous idea. I'm proposing a simple criteria by which you can judge whether or not an action falls within this moral sphere and can be judged in a moral context. If something doesn't fall within this category, then we can't view it in terms of morality, and we can't judge people for it. Now, there are two boxes that must be checked in order to say that something does fall within the moral sphere. The first of these is that there must be a conscious agent committing the action, and the second is that the action must have some effect on human well-being. Now, as a quick aside, as I'll need to mention this briefly, I've said before that I disagree with Sam Harris about morality. Uh, I don't believe that morality is objective or can be objective, because to believe this is to assume that well-being is intrinsically a good thing. However, this doesn't matter in this instance, because there is something that we can all agree on here, that our sense of morality is based upon well-being. The only difference is that I think this is a subjective assumption we make because of our evolutionary tendencies, whereas Dr. Harris thinks that morality is, by definition, based on well-being. I've discussed this at length before with Rationality Rules, a link is in the description. Still, we can see that whether we believe in God or not, and whether we believe morality is objective or not, we can all agree that morality is based upon the well-being of living creatures. Again, if you need convincing of this, watch the video in the description. Having said all this, we can now take some examples and determine whether or not they fall within the moral sphere. Now, in order to help us with this, I've drawn a very high-quality table which has four sections. I don't know how well you can see this, uh, but I've split it between conscious acts, unconscious acts, uh, things that affect well-being, and things that don't affect well-being. As you can see, an action has to be both conscious and affect well-being, to fall within the moral sphere, and I'll explain why. And I'm sorry that I have to spell this out, but there is a reason for it, so just bear with me. If an action does not affect well-being, then as we've already determined that morality is based upon well-being, it doesn't fall within the moral sphere, and can't be judged accordingly. For example, if I decide to lift my hand, that's a conscious act, but it doesn't have any effect on well-being, and therefore doesn't fall within the moral sphere. You can't judge me for doing it. Likewise, if I were to roll over in my sleep, uh, that's an unconscious act, but it also doesn't have any effect on well-being, and so I definitely can't be morally judged for it. So now we can consider acts that do affect well-being. So take the following example. If I were to sleepwalk one night, and knock over a glass of water in the kitchen before returning to bed, and do so completely unconsciously, and the next day somebody slipped on the water and died, I've committed an act that affects well-being. However, I wouldn't be held morally accountable, because I didn't consciously do it. Uh, and you can see that that means it doesn't fall within the moral sphere. On the other hand, if I intentionally trip someone up, causing them injury, then I've done something that definitely affects well-being, and I've done so consciously. That means it falls within the moral sphere, ding, 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 I can be held 
morally accountable. So an act must be conscious, not by chance, not by accident, and must affect well-being, be it a positive or a negative effect, to be considered either moral or immoral. If these conditions are not met, the action is amoral and no rational person can judge a person for committing it. To do so is to fly in the face of rationality. It would be like holding a volcano morally accountable for erupting. So now we can apply all of this to homosexuality. Firstly, does homosexuality affect well-being? Well, of course, we can talk all day about the benefits and detriments of gay parentage or the inclusion of homosexuality in sexual education, but these are separate issues from simply being a homosexual, and gay marriage for that matter too. Both of these things do not affect anybody else and therefore do not fall within the moral sphere. So in theory, we could conclude here. But for the benefit of those still unconvinced, let's check homosexuality against our other moral criteria. So secondly, is homosexuality a conscious choice? Now, there is a debate about this. It's a fatuous debate, however, and we can largely dismiss it. The problem with the debate is that it's usually framed in the following way. Either homosexuality is natural and determined by birth, or it's instilled in a person by their environment and upbringing. But think about it for a moment, and you'll realize that even if being gay is determined by upbringing and environmental factors, it's still not a choice. Did you choose your music taste? Here's a trait that certainly doesn't come from your genes, but rather from your environment and your upbringing. Still, it's not a choice. And if something is not a choice, then you cannot be held morally accountable for it. But don't take my word for it. Take Immanuel Kant's. You may have heard of his ethical idea, ought implies can. What he means by this is that to suggest that somebody ought to do something or be a certain way, there must necessarily be a possibility that they can do so. If they can't, that is, if it's impossible to do something, then you can't say that they ought to do it. That would be like saying to a person of colour that they ought to be white, and, furthermore, like telling a gay person that they ought to be straight. It just doesn't make logical sense. But here's the key point, and this is what explains my statement at the beginning of the video. Having proved that homosexuality does not fall within the moral sphere, there's another claim that we cannot make. We can't say that homosexuality is moral. We can't say that it's a good thing. We can't say that it's beneficial for the exact same reasons that we can't say that it's immoral or detrimental. All we can say is that it's amoral. Morality doesn't even come into it. Homosexuality has nothing to do with right and wrong and is simply an innocent sexual orientation that nobody decides upon. As soon as you start trying to make a link between homosexuality and morality, you've already lost the debate. So the next time that somebody tries to argue to you that homosexuality is immoral, don't engage them by claiming that it's the opposite. Instead, explain to them that they're thinking about it in the wrong way and need to reframe the entire discussion. You could even show them this video, I promise, I really wouldn't mind. If somebody asks you about the morality of homosexuality, respond to them as if they've just asked about the morality of skin colour. Say they were to ask you, but do you really think it's moral to be black? This is a palpably stupid question. Of course it's not moral to be black. It's not immoral to be black. It's something that's out of your control and has absolutely nothing to do with morality. And so is homosexuality. And that means that you have no right to morally judge somebody for their sexual orientation any more than you have the right to judge them for their colour of their skin or the shape of their ears. So no, homosexuality is not moral. But it's not immoral either. And you should still vote yes to marriage equality. And you should still celebrate the invaluable freedom that it represents. I've been Alex O'Connor, or Cosmic Skeptic. You can find me on social media here. I want to thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.